Hello my dears and welcome back to my tiny corner of the internet. Today is a Wednesday which means I have a book talk video for you guys. But before we get into that I just wanted to mention that on Monday I actually reached 300 subscribers and I just wanted to thank you guys so much. Um, it's absolutely insane to me especially when I consider that I've only been on YouTube since the end of February. So that just that just seems amazing and I've been loving getting to know you guys so much, watching your videos, interacting with you. You're all so great and I just appreciate you so much. So, now, it's time to get into it. And we are going to get into it today. So, the main focus of this video is going to be the book club selection. Which, if you've read, great. Feel free to jump in to discussion. If you haven't, feel free to just enjoy hearing about a really amazing book. But before that, I thought, it's just one book, that's not enough, Shannon. We need, we need something else, otherwise the video is going to be over before it's even begun. So, I thought to myself, The Nest. The book club selection is called The Nest. So what, what else could we fit into this kind of theme? And what I came up with is other books, kind of, with bird titles. So, the first book that we're going to be talking about um, is Raven Black by Anne Cleves. Now, um, this is an award-winning book. It's a kind of um, murder mystery, psychological thriller kind of thing. And it's about a young woman who, one night, she's walking home um, in her town or through her town, which has recently had a huge snowstorm. And as she's walking, she notices um, a figure kind of off to the side, and as she gets closer, she realizes that it's the strangled body of her teenage neighbor. And so from there begins a, you know, the whole huge unraveling of the whodunit. And um, I was actually reading earlier today that apparently this was the first of a series. But I've never, I've never read any of the other ones. Uh, but I could see how this could, you know, become a series. Um, it was really great. I enjoyed it. Um, there's a lot of themes that are very uncomfortable to read and to think about. So, um, if you're a little sensitive, which I am, but, um, if you're especially sensitive, I guess, um, maybe you you this isn't for you, but if you love um, mysteries and thrillers, this is excellent. And I would definitely recommend it. So, you know, it's you know, it's the thriller and the crime, but there's so much more to it and it's beautifully written. And I remember at the time when I read this, this was a while ago at this point, thinking like this writer is something special. And I had never read anything by her before, and I haven't again yet, but I definitely will be looking out for her. Um, I really enjoyed it. So the next one, before we get to The Nest, is The Dove Keepers by Alice Hoffman. Now I am a huge Alice Hoffman fan, and I'm actually thinking about um, dedicating an entire video to her. You guys, you want to see the cutest thing? I haven't read this in a long time. I haven't held it or looked at it. And I just opened it up. I saw there was a piece of paper sticking out. And it says, I love Mommy and Daddy. My daughter made this years ago. I love when you find little treasures like that inside books. How cute. <laughs> I'll have to show her that tomorrow. She'll get a kick out of it. Um... What was I saying? Oh, yes. So I'm a huge fan of Alice Hoffman, and I'm uh, considering uh, dedicating an entire book talk video to her, like I did with Paulo Coelho, and I'm going to do with Stephen King, and probably Neil Gaiman, um, and a few others. So uh, this is not my favorite of hers, but it was really good. It takes place in ancient Israel, and it tells the story of four women um, at that time who are dove keepers, like literally, they, they handle doves and um, it's based on actual events and what I really liked about it is it teaches us about a period of history that I certainly wasn't familiar with 
and maybe a lot of people won't be because it's not it's not you know one of the um, often visited events in history um, and I don't want to give too much of it away but um, if you've read any any of Alice Hoffman's books um, you'll find something familiar here it's there's a familiarity in it because all of her other books a lot of them they're really similar to me um, and I love every single one of them but there's a lot of recurring themes so you'll find a bit of that here but it's also really different and what I love about this is that it is such a departure for her while still remaining very much her and that's I think that's a really interesting talent to have so it's it's just you know it's about these four strong graceful wonderful Jewish women who are all on their own paths and it's just the story of where that takes them and it's just it's so elegantly written elegant I think is the best word for it it's just so elegantly written and it's a beautiful story and at times you know it took me a little longer than maybe some other books to get through but um, I would still 100% recommend it and when I was done I was sorry it was over so that's the Dove Keepers <laughs> and now here we are to talk about the nest finally I've mentioned this one in so many videos like oh three more weeks two more weeks one more week and now here we are I loved this book it was so good um, so let's talk about it it's about the nest is in the title is in reference to an inheritance that a group of siblings are going to get when the youngest of them turns 40. Now what it was originally was their father had put a bit of money aside for them and he didn't want it to be too much like he was a fairly wealthy man but he didn't want to leave them too much money because he didn't want life to be too comfortable for them you know he wanted them to have uh, you know a bit of cushion so that if times got rough they had something to fall back on but he didn't want it to be something so that their lives were completely changed so he puts aside this small savings and dies and then the children learn that from the time that he put the money away in a say uh, like in a, in a bond or um, what's the word um, I don't know why I can't think of the word. He puts the money in like stocks or bonds or something, I can't quite remember, but somewhere where it is growing. And by the time, so in the time that passes from the time he dies to the time it's time for the children to get the money, it has become a giant amount of money, like a life-changing amount. And the kids know this. <clears throat> and they're kind of they've been kind of living their lives making decisions based on the certainty of this money coming to them so never a good idea so then what happens is one of the sons I think the eldest child definitely the eldest son maybe the eldest child in general he is involved in a scandal he's a married man he gets into a car accident while engaged in um, some very scandalous behavior with a young waitress and um, she is horribly injured in the accident and he gets carted off to rehab and while he's in there um, without really um, telling the kids the mom takes a large sum of money to pay off this young waitress that was injured so that she doesn't speak because they're a rather you know um, society family in New York City and they don't want this getting out it could be terrible and then they've also got to kind of pay off his um, wife who's now leaving him and they've also got to pay for his hospital bills the girls hospital bills and now his rehab stay and so the mom takes the money from the nest and uses that to pay all of these things and what happens is there's not much money left <laughs> and the kids are all very upset and once uh, the brother Leo gets out of rehab they kind of demand to know how he intends to replenish the nest because the youngest daughter's 40th birthday is coming up and that is when they are going to get the money so 
that's kind of what sets everything into motion. Then you have a bunch of people who are kind of panicked, like um, the other brother, Jack. He's kind of been um, borrowing um, without telling his partner with the intent of paying it back without it being noticed once he gets his inheritance. But now, there's not nearly enough money to do that. One of the sisters, she's, you know, she's kind of been banking on this money to send her twins to college and um, maintain her lifestyle. And now, of course, that's not really going to happen. So the story goes on to tell the tale of these four siblings who, in their own way, try to come to terms with what their life is now. And that sounds kind of simplistic and maybe a little, you know, um, shallow on the surface and um, just selfish, but really, when it boils down to it, it's just such an interesting tale. And there's so many themes running through it. I love reading stories about families. I love um, learning about other families' dynamics and how they work. and. I just always find it so interesting because it's such a complicated relationship, the people you're related to, you know, the people you love more than anything and that make you matter than anything and who um, give you hope and raise you up but also disappoint you and drag you down sometimes and you just, you know, it's the kind of can't live with them, can't live without them situations. And I love reading about those because it's so relatable. It's just that universal theme. No matter what your relationship is with your family, you can relate to reading about a family. Even if it isn't, you know, similar situations to yours. And I just love that. This book was fantastic. This was her debut novel. And, I mean, that's enough to put, you know, as a... Um, as a aspiring uh, novelist who hopes to have her first book out within uh, the next year. It just, it puts you to shame because you're reading, you're like, how? This is wonderful. And as simplistic as the story might sound, the writing is what really takes it to the next level. And it's beautifully written, and it's intelligently written, and it just, it kept me turning the pages, and I'd love to know if any of you read um, read it. If so, jump into the discussion, and I'd, I'd love to know what you thought. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I want to say about it. There's just... I like, too, that it had a realistic ending. You know, everything turns out okay, but not in the way that you might think it would. It turns out okay in that everyone finds their own path despite despite the losses that they encounter they just they keep going and they in most cases it makes them stronger in other case in another case it it just makes them more of who they've always been and it's fun to read and it's sad to read there were times you know um, there were parts that made me emotional and there were parts that made me laugh out loud and but for most of it I just kind of I, I, I found it really relatable I could understand a lot of people's perspectives on what was happening and I found it really fun to read so if you read it I hope you enjoyed it if not I mean if you find it feel free to pick it up and give it a read I don't think I think it's the kind of book that is like anyone can kind of pick it up it's just, you know, a general literary fiction. There's no genre to it, aside from that. And there's something for everyone. And there's enough characters that I think there's someone for everyone. Like, you'll, you'll kind of see yourself more in one than the others. And that'll just make it all the more relatable. So, I was going through my to-be-read pile, and I thought I would pick another book club selection. And the one that kept popping out to me is um, The Book Thief. Now, I've heard so many amazing things about this book. So, if you've already read it, feel free to just, you know, jump back in when we get to the discussion part. Because, what's this? May 24th? So, we'll give this, um, I'll give you an exact date next week, but I'm thinking we'll give this till like the first week of July, maybe? That way it gives everyone enough time to find it, 
read it and get ready to talk about it. And like I said, if you've already read it, come on back once we um, jump into the discussion and I would love to hear what you guys think about it. So I'll just read you the back of this and then you can see if you'd be interested in reading. So it says, by her brother's graveside, Liesl Memminger finds her life changed when she picks up a single object, partially hidden in the snow. It's the gravedigger's handbook, left there by accident, and it's her first act of book thievery. So begins a love affair with books and words, as Liesl, with the help of her accordion-playing foster father, learns to read. Soon she is stealing books from Nazi book burnings, the mayor's wife's library, wherever there are books to be found. But these are dangerous times. When Liesl's foster family hides a Jewish man in their basement, Liesl's world is both opened up and closed down. In superbly crafted writing that burns with intensity, award-winning author Marcus Zusak has given us one of the most enduring stories of our time. The Book Thief. I cannot wait to read this, and I can't wait to talk about it. So, if you're into that, um, let me know if you're going to be reading along as well, and we can look forward to talking about it. So until Friday's video when I will finally have my Ipsy bag and I will be doing an opening of that. So until then, I hope the rest of your week goes great and I'll see you on Friday and uh, I'll talk to you then guys. Bye.